Hi, the ho everyone. My name's Mr. Fruit, and welcome to the new series I'm gonna be calling Storytime with Mr. Fruit. I've got some stories to tell, and perhaps I've got some stories you might want to hear. Either way, I think it'll be fun, good to know each other a little bit more, but in the meantime, gather around by the fire, and let's begin today's story. So this story takes place seventh grade. That might not be of much importance, but I think it is to me. It was the first time I went babysitting. Now, I don't know if you've done babysitting. Perhaps you're not old enough to babysit, or perhaps you have in your lifetime. Then you, you know what it's like. Sometimes it's chaotic. Sometimes you get uh, some really nice kids. Sometimes you get some really unruly kids. This story, however, isn't about the kids. It wasn't about the kids at, uh, that I had to babysit. No, they were fine. In fact, they were great. I had a fun time. They seemed to like me. All around, I was like, this can, we can do this. So they were neighbors, not too far from me, I want to say about a two minute of a walk, not very far. And they needed somebody to cover them while they went on their little date night. Now they had a babysitter, they usually did, but she was out or something. And by the graces of the Greybeards, uh, they're like, yo, we'll pay you like $50 to come sit in for like five hours. And I'm like, um, yes, please. So I went over and I decided to babysit. So I got there. It was about uh, 7 at night, 6, not really 2. They were doing like dinner in a movie. You know the usual when they're trying to escape from their unruly kids or <laughs> their headaches. <laughs> I'm not a parent, so I can't say that. But I know I've been a headache. But the point is, got there, they gave me some directions. They're like, okay, this is what you need to do. Two kids, blah, blah, blah. Pretty young age, pretty easy. If you want to do something, go in the backyard, play with them. They have some snacks, blah, blah, blah. This is their bedtime. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, really, I... Pretty much had to entertain them for two, two and a half hours before bedtime, so it wasn't that much. I was like, I'm up for the task. But then they told me, oh, by the way, we have two cats. So I'm like, eh, no cats. You know, I'm allergic to cats, so it's not best case scenario, but it's not like death scenario. Or it could be. Turns out it was. So the point is, they had two cats. They had a beige looking cat. I don't remember the names. And then a black cat. I do remember this cat's name that I dubbed it. El Diablo. That was the cat's name. Not actually his name, but the one I gave to him. Thought it was pretty fitting. You'll know why in a second. So anyway, they had these two cats. They said, the beige cat, really shy. You don't really have to worry about him. He might come and, you know, like, hug up and be like, meow. And sort of, like, figure out what's going on and then just, you know, leave you in your peace. Then they said the black cat. He's like, no, pff. As far as we know, the black cat doesn't even exist. Like, never comes out. We don't even know. <laughs> We haven't seen it in, like, two weeks. Who knows if it's alive? So, I got the point. Probably not going to see this cat. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm allergic, but as long as I stay away and hopefully don't interact too much with the hair and stuff, I should be fine. So, I didn't really think too much of it. So, went through the day just fine. The kids and I played. We had a good time. We played in the back. We played inside. They beat me up. Why is that always a thing that kids like to do with their babysitters? Is beat them up. I don't know. It says a lot about... A young, innocent child's process. You know, immediately humans just go to violence. Story for another time. The kids, the cats. The kids were going to sleep. So it was easy peasy. Went upstairs. They, so to give you a little layout of the house, it had a second store. Se second store? Second floor. And it had a, like a semi spiral staircase going up to the second floor where the bedrooms were. So I escorted the kids up. The staircase, tra la 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 la. They had to brush their teeth, blah blah blah. A little dude didn't want to go to bed, so I had to, you know, like, pay a tummy or something, read him a story. I don't remember. So they finally got to sleep, shut the doors, peace and quiet. And now I knew it was just, just a waiting game from now on. They had like a TV, just go around, sit, watch some movie for two hours until they get home, get paid, money, 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 head home. And then a successful night it would have been. If that's what had happened. If that's what had happened, I wouldn't be telling the story. But unfortunately, no, that's where the story begins, my friend. So I was a little thirsty. They told me there were some water bottles in the fridge. So I went into the fridge. I didn't want to scavenge for food and stuff. I didn't feel that felt wrong. You know, they're already paying me. I'm not about to go rummage through their pantry. So I opened up the door. The fridge door. You know, whoosh. And I'm looking around. I see the water bottle. Okay, so... I go to grab it, I'm looking, like, with the snacks they have. Okay. And now this is where it begins. Now, I'm talking, like, textbook scary movie stuff, okay? You know when they, they close a door or something, and then, boom! That thing pops up, and you know what's coming. Because you're watching the movie and the camera angle. So imagine 
This is the door, right? I have it open, and then close it. Boom! Like, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Except only it wasn't up here, it was down there. So I open it up, close it, and then boom! I don't know where this black cat appears. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. Okay, it's just a cat. Nothing to freak out about, it's just a cat. Kind of freaked me out a little bit, spooked me a little bit, but I'm like, that's okay, that's okay. And it meows at me. It's like, meow. So I'm like, oh, it's, it's this black guy I thought I'd never have to interact with. So I'm like, oh, it's just, maybe it's bored or wants someone to play. So I'm just like, meow. Just sort of like a, a whimper back at it. And then it goes, meow. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so I'm a little touchy. Meow. And he goes, meow. I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on here. But I'm gonna leave. So I start to walk, tra la 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 la, to the living room. When I see that the the cat is in pounce mode, you know, it's it is hunting. It is primal instincts engaged. It's right behind me. Hata, hata, hata. Yeah, I'm trying to be real sneaky, but I look back and it's like, like you know, stop. I'm not. Does think of it's food or something? I am the alpha here. I will have you know, cat. You will not best me. I'm Mr. Fruit. I didn't actually say that. I was, I was a little afraid now. I was like, Man, this is a little weird, but that's okay. So I just sat down on the couch, right? Sat down, living room, or sorry, the kitchen is behind me. I'm just sitting on the couch, watching the TV right in front of me. I get the menu out, surfing channels, not really finding anything. And that's when I hear, thum, thum. So, oh. so I look over, and then, the cat Jumped up, right onto my shoulder. Now at this point, you're probably like, "That's what cats do. They want to be near people. They just have. They just wanted to party. Wanted to bud." No, not this cat. Not this cat indeed. Especially with the way they're saying he was so shy and just never came out. This was very odd behavior. So I wasn't sure. And he pretty much almost perched up on my shoulder. So at this point, it was less fear I was going to get eaten and more fear I was going to die of my allergies. So I was like. So I was okay. This cat's gonna do me out here. So I was a little, I was a little spooked. But after about a few minutes, he jumped down. Say, like, ah, okay, he's gone. I don't know where he went. You know, to the to the depths of hell from whence he came. I really don't know. But to me, it didn't matter. He was gone. He was out of my life, and I could watch my show. Peacefully. So maybe 30 minutes passed. I'm hearing all the... Here and there, and I'm, I'm hearing some odd noises. I'm starting to psych myself out here. But I'm like, it's just a cat. What's it going to do? You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. And at this point, I wanted to make sure the kids had gotten to sleep. They weren't staying up or, you know, whatever kids do. I don't know. Make sure they were good. So I headed up the stairs, naturally, to go check up on the kids. I opened up the door... The little girl's sleeping well. Okay. Open up next door. Little dude's sleeping well. They're both sound asleep. Well, this is easy. All right. It's maybe got an hour and a half left. They'll be home. Easy. Get paid. Now, this is when El Satan attacks. So coming down the semi-spiral staircase. Like, so it's just this. Like, instead of a spiral. Like, you understand? Okay, that's really not that important. Point is, there's one way up and one way down. So there's only one way down to get to the first floor. And that's the staircase. So I start down the staircase. When, all of a sudden, I recognize the black cat. Now, the black cat is sitting down at the steps of the stairs. So I'm like, okay, so he's come out of hiding. Maybe he's chilling or something. Or he's just, he's curious. Maybe he just wants to see what's going on. Maybe he's protectful. You know, like, hey, what are you doing with my kids? So I, I, I really don't know. So I head down the staircase, as one would, to get to the first floor. And as I'm taking my steps, I start to notice that he's taking steps in rhythm. I take a step. He takes a step up. I go down. He goes up. I go down. You get the point here. He goes up. So at this point, there's only so much space in between before we're going to meet. So I'm talking like, I freeze. And he's like, whoop. I'm like, whoop. So like, this isn't this isn't coincidence. He is on the hunt. Maybe he was in heat. I don't know. Point is, I'm going down. I'm like, does he want to get up the stairs? Is he 
nervous of? Is he afraid of me? He should be. Although I'm more afraid of him than he probably is of me. So I start to head down. I'm like, okay. This isn't... And I take a step. And I start to hear something. Something very similar to the rattle of a rattlesnake. Now, I realize that some cats can sort of hiss. Like, hiss. But I'm talking this had like a... Like a... I can't even... I can't even recreate such an awful demonic sound. It's like a rattle. From a cat. So I take a step. And as you go in, he stopped at this point. There's maybe three steps between us at this point. Three or four. I just hear... Like in the distance. You know, it's not very loud. I'm like looking at the cat and it's like... It's it's eyeballing me. You know, it is death stare. Give me the stanky eye. So I'm like, hmm. I take... I start to take another step. And that's when the the, the, the little... Drone I could hear before becomes a loud, a loud. So I'm like, Whoa, is that coming from this thing? I'm looking at it. It's, sure enough, it's like, like you know, it's like showing its fangs, but like, like its tongue, oscillating its tongue. I believe that's the right term to use. I, I really don't know. Point is, that sound is not okay. So I'm like, what? What is this? What demonic being has taken over this cat and is about to come get me? That's what I'm thinking. You know, this is a spawn of Satan. And I'm gonna die. May the power of Christ compel you, little cat, because... Whew, I don't want nothing to do with that. So the rattling continues. And at this point, I'm frozen. I'm like... I'm not sure how... to approach this. There's nothing to do upstairs. And I, and, and I was thinking, if I go upstairs, will he just corner off the stairs? Then I'm stuck there, and there's nowhere to go. There's a bathroom, and then the kids' bedrooms, and the master bedroom. So I don't, I don't have anywhere to go. Just a little hallway. So I'm like, if I go up there, he's gonna corner me and eat me. You know, like I gotta fight for myself. I gotta fight for my right to party. So being the the brave person I am, I take a step. I take a full step. That was my first mistake. That's what. Wax him. Takes his pants. Something like. Like, what in the world? And it, ah, I had socks on. So it didn't, and the thing too is it, um, what, it, what is, you have to like cut the nails on the cat? Well, it wasn't. It didn't have its nails cut. So it did like go through the sock a little bit. I'm like, oh. So I took took the step back. You know, I'm like, okay, takesy backsies. That's my bad. That's my bad. Meanwhile, this cat's like, Now tell me that's normal. Because it's not. So I'm over here contemplating my life. All right, like, all right, I have a little bit of battery left in my phone. Who should I call to tell them I love them before, you know, my last moments? Like, my mom. My mom. So I'm like, this is it. I don't know where to go. I, at this point, it's like an hour 15. I've got an hour 15 to wait until their parents come home and I'm done. And I'm set free from the shackles of this cat. So I'm like, is this a normal thing? Do they know about this? And so, I take one one step just to see, like, maybe he's changed his mind. No, he's not changed his mind. I was agile enough to avoid it this time around, so no blood came spewing out of my, my leg. I mean, it never did. It never punctured skin. Except at first, it was like a little scratch. You know, like a hiss. So this cat just sits there. It just sits there, staring at me. Mind you, the whole time. Not breaking eye contact. Just... I'm over here like, uh, why me? What have I done? So I do the only thing I can think of. I sit down. I try to break bread with the cat. I let him know, I am not your enemy. I'm not gonna hurt you. You might hurt me, but I, I promise I'm not. I don't. I just don't want anything to do with you. So I sit down. You know what the cat does? He sits down too, mirroring me, taunting me. But he just he sits there. He's like sort of on two steps. So he's sort of just like. Like, laying out. You know what I'm saying? And just... So I'm sitting here like, no one's gonna... This... No one's gonna believe me. <laughs> this is... Unfortunately, I didn't have a camera phone back then. I did have a cell phone, but, uh... Didn't have any... I wish I had documented this, because... It would have gotten, like, some paranormal activity thing. The day the... The ghoul of... Whatever this house was... 
took over their cat. This is probably, like, if there was a scary movie, I would have left. And then that night, the whole family would have died. And the only thing left would have been the black cat, and then the black cat would have moved to another house. You know, something like that. That kind of story. So I'm sitting there, on the steps, like, halfway down the staircase. And, um, I'm being bested by a cat. Looking back at it now, it's... <laughs> it's oh God, so many, I'm just, just picturing it. Me just sitting on the steps with this cat. Just this little black cat. And I'm like... <sighs> so in the face of adversity, what do you do? When a demonic cat attacks you, you do the only thing. Natural. Call your mom. So I, I ring up my mother. Mom! And she's like, what? What? What's, what's wrong, honey? Are you okay? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just fine besides this demonic cat. Right in front of me. Besides that, yeah, I'm doing peachy. Real peachy. And uh, she's like, what are you talking about? She's at dinner or something. Doing something. I don't know. And I was like, there is this cat. And they said it wouldn't be a problem. And she and, and she thinks she had noted something. Like, yeah, she they told me about that. But she's like, no, 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 no. It won't be a problem. You'll never run into it. That's what they told me. Yeah, well, I ran into it. So I tell her, like, listen, there's been some spooky things going on. And this isn't normal. This cat isn't normal. And he currently has me cornered on the stairs. He has attacked me, lunged at me. He's hissing and he won't let me pass. And then, you know, being the supportive mother she is, she starts laughing at me. And that makes me feel pretty good about myself. Like, oh, okay, so it's just a joke to you. My death is just a joke to you, huh? These are my last words. Maybe my last words. At any moment, that thing could pounce and my jugular. And you know what? I'm out. I'm tapped. I'm done for. Dunzo. I'm going to be haunted by that cat now. Some other demonic being. I don't know. Yeah, so she just laughs and she's like, well, have you tried walking past it? And I'm like, well, pfft. Pfft. Do I have a death sentence? No, I haven't tried walking past it. I've tried approaching it. But dare I run past it? Could you imagine? Well, I thought of two things. One, I run past it. It swipes at me. I lose a leg or something. Or two, I run past it, accidentally step on it, and then it gets to play the pity card when the parents come home. You know, like, meow. It has like a like a hurt foot. And I'm like, oh my God, what have you done to our cat? And I was like, Whoa, what have I done? What has it done? So really, there was no win-win situation there. So no, running was out of the options. So she she's like, ah, you'll be fine. They'll be home soon. She'd... She hangs up. So, thanks for that, Mom. Should have called like animal, animal rescue or something. I don't, I don't know. Pest control? How about the local church to get the priest come heal and cleanse this cat of its demonic ways? I didn't know what to do. So, moral of the story is I sat there for an hour and a half and stared that cat down, doing absolutely nothing. Till the parents arrived. And at that moment, like the, I heard the door open, like the, the keys fimbling and fangling, jangling in the door. And I'm like, Hoo! and so I step up and the cat bolts, right? Of course it does. The cat bolts. So I get up and I'm like, Hoo! so I'm like sort of like walking down the stairs, looking all nonchalant. And they're like, oh, hey. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just checking on the kids. They're <laughs> freaking I, I can't remember if I told them what happened. I know my mom did later on. And apparently they laughed as well. And they said, oh, that's so strange. That cat never, like, never says hi to anyone, let alone us, let alone him. So, I am, I am set that to this day, during that night, I encountered El Diablo. That must have been him. Or the Grim Reaper. I, either way, that was a night to remember, my friends, and that is why I hate cats. And you're like, well, that's just one instance. No, I see it in all cats now. They all have that same... <laughs> Somewhere in them. Believe me. And I don't want nothing to do with it. So in the meantime, I'm going to stick to dogs. I love dogs. They're so nice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our first story time. I don't know what story I told you. I thought that was pretty fun. I know it's pretty weird and it doesn't really have a, a moral or an ending or anything. I just thought it was a pretty strange occurrence. And I remember that so vividly that whole entire night. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. Uh, if you guys have uh, where you want to see some more stuff... More story time, let me know. If you have topics you might want to hear about, and maybe I have a story about, put them down below. Or any comments or criticism about the story time that I can use to improve further story time videos. Regardless, though, thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic day. And watch out for cats, man. They'll get you.